I'm Liz Casanova, and I'm with the director of Actress Robert Green. Um, nice, nice for you to be here. This is this is really awesome. Your film is amazing. I think. Well, wow. thanks. Uh, nice to be here. So I want to ask, how did you get Brandy to agree to be your subject for what did you say, 18 months? Yeah. Well, I think you know. The part of the whole thing is that she has this real love-hate relationship with the camera. Um, so part of it was never a doubt was she going to agree to do it. Mm -hmm. And part of it was always like, you know, that she would do anything. She would like to run away and hide under a rock if she can. You know, that's part of what makes her such a fascinating subject and star is that she you know does both you know she wants to be the person putting herself out there but at the same time she wants to be left completely alone and no, you know leave me alone stay away from me I want to be quiet and think you know and that that's so I, I think like I I tried different things to appeal to her because I was fascinated by her and I really didn't know exactly what direction we couldn't possibly have predicted the direction the film would actually go in so you know I think ultimately the start of it was an attraction to this possibility of doing work in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, and then that sort of trans transformed over the course of the filming to what the film became. And then it was, we were making an art project about her life and she was in it. And then she knew she was a collaborator, you know, so she knew that it wasn't just my perspective on her life. It was, it was, we were working towards an understanding, you know. So as I was watching the film, I was thinking, well, he's capturing this person who's an actress. Isn't he afraid that she's going to be acting, yeah. you know, like a different person? But obviously, you kind of wanted that. Yeah, um, I, I think. Well, I think that's what happens in all documentaries. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what's happening right now. We're, we're, you know, it's it's a <laughs> it's an it's sort of an op such an obvious thing to say that we're always performing. Yeah. But when you put a camera there, mm -hmm. the camera detects the performance in a certain way, and that's fascinating to me because I, because that's not fascinating to me because the end goal is to just say that we're all performing because that's boring. Yeah. Everyone knows that. the The goal is to say like, what are the consequences of performing? What are the when we're stuck in these roles what are what are we doing why we're doing why are we doing it mm -hmm. and what are the what are the con like what are the consequences what happens and she was obviously stuck in these roles in some ways of being the mother the wife mm -hmm. that home you know home keeper or whatever the yeah. housewife you know and and that those had consequences for her emotional being you know mm -hmm. and so the f so what i saw in her was that because she's a she has a master's degree in acting she mm -hmm. is able to emote and and perform this truth mm -hmm. in a way that that is just a different level than than you or I would as like normal people who are just normally performing yeah. our normal selves even though <laughs> we're performers in different ways you know and so like she so that added a layer of this whole thing and it took it out of it just being like watching a regular person being exposed she's she's controlling it by her own performance so the, the goal of the film is to sort of let you think like think through those layers you know if you can see those layers if you could see the layer of herself her performance her extra performance the camera mm -hmm. all that stuff then maybe you can know a little bit more about how we all sort of put ourselves in these roles and we get trapped by those 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 things you know I mean I don't know I don't know if it works but that's the hope well I think it's very relatable to women even if you're not an actress or you have nothing to do with the entertainment industry like i was telling her there are things that she said that were just shocking that it's like women keep inside they yeah. don't tell people these kinds of things i mean you really drew out i mean because as a director you you had a, a role in bringing that out of her sure i mean i think like <clears throat> she's a gift to me in many ways one of way one of which is just mm -hmm. the way that she rants <laughs> you know <laughs> like she'll just go off on a stream of a rant mm -hmm. and in that rant will be the like five or six amazing unbelievable things that I can't believe she just said that she won't even remember she said them yeah. but she's just a she's just she's a person and I think this is this is uh, this is a quality that a lot of actors have and 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 there and this is what makes them actors like mm -hmm. you know we talk about it like she is an actor she it's a, she's a human being who happens to have this love-hate relationship with the way being looked at and expressing yeah. things you know and that's what all actors have that's why they become actors um, and that's what become singers and that's why they put themselves out there and that's why they retract from being yeah. out there and she has this way of, of 
trying to get at her core being so deeply that she'll just say things and she'll just go there and she'll just like she says things that as a parent I'm like yeah. oh my god like when she's like I forgot you know yeah. Stella's birthday like oh my god like I but I know that what that means that di- that moment when you forget and then you're free for a second because yeah. you forgot yeah. and she like is able to embody that and say it and be like it doesn't mean I don't love my children yeah. it doesn't mean I'm a bad person mm-hmm. and that that's a powerful thing you know, she's she's able as a human being able yeah. to express that. You know, and um, well, being her friend, were there moments that maybe she said something or, or something happened that you felt as a friend I have to protect her and I can't put that on on the screen? Were there any moments? May, like that? Um, there, there are definitely things in the movie. Like, like I can give one example, but I'll start by saying that's not. If you're Brandy's friend, friend, you know that she wouldn't want you to be that way. Mm-hmm. A. Because she's like, look, I said it, uh, you know, like I, I, we were on stage uh, at a at a film festival recently. It was her 40th birthday. We were had a screening at, on her 40th birthday, and I w- and I said something like, well, you know, most women don't want you to know what they're. She's like, I'm 40. Don't say like <laughs> like she would just not want me to be like, yeah, you know, saying something like she doesn't want to discard. You know, she doesn't want to cover it up. You know, like so she's like, I, I said it, I said it. What do you want? But like, but there, but when she says like, there are some lines that are in the movie that are in the movie now that she like got, you know, you know, stuff from her, you know, her mom or something yeah. or her sister who would be like, you can't say that kind of thing. Like you're getting, get in trouble. And she was like, well, maybe, maybe I look terrible. And I was like, well, Brandy, you know, it's, you, you know, you don't look terrible. You know, you meant this. So like, and ultimately like the key to the thing is that I am her friend and I love her, but it's not just some sort of you know gentle soft portrait of a person like she is yeah. a complex prickly human being <laughs> in many ways and she draws you in and pushes you away yeah. and my job was to convince her that it was okay to embrace that and she embraces it every day anyway but I wasn't trying to make a portrait of someone that were, that was smoothed over all the edges because yeah. that's uninteresting you know so like I, I you know I I'm not trying to make something where she only looks good and that's my job you know so like and she knows that and she never asked me to change anything but but at the same time there were like for instance there like she goes on this rant about about a diaper changer and she's explaining what happened between her and Tim and this but like she could have said a number of other things and like the editing of that is to sort of give it a crafting crafting her story to sort of allow her to sort of like get the point across without seeming petty Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of editing that occurs you know she's very I'm very I'm editing her very much you know but but I still let her run off and be herself and you know you know I I don't feel like I have to protect her Brandy doesn't need protecting (laughs) and um, it's so unique in that it doesn't feel like a classic documentary and it doesn't even feel like you know other types of documentaries it's it's so unique Um, Tell us, a, tell us a little bit. I mean, it, it feels like uh, what Bart was saying earlier. It feels like a narrative film at times. Yeah. Um, what, is, is that's your style, and um, how did how did you kind of develop that? Well, I just think it's filmmaking. You know, like filmmaking choices. So, like you know, you you use images, you use editing, you use music, you mm-hmm. use sound, you use all those things to to conjure a place. You know, it's just like you can you know you can say in text you know yeah. this is Beacon New York population yeah. thir- thir- you know f- 5,300 uh, and this it's a commuter town or you could show it and and too often documentary filmmakers like lean towards the telling with text and that kind of yeah. stuff and not the showing and like and people are so afraid of being boring that they don't make anything interesting mm-hmm. like and like e- even tonight, I am watching it, and like there's slow parts, and I'm like, oh, it's so slow. But no, I got you know, I trust <laughs> my instincts here. Like yeah. people are dr- drawn in because you're drawn in by the mystery, you're drawn in by the by the you know by the things that make it a movie. Like yeah. the fact that you don't know that she's from The Wire until 25 minutes into the movie, like that's something that people were like, oh, you have to say right up front that she was in The Wire because that'll <laughs> make it interesting. And I'm like, no, it makes it more interesting if you don't know why you're watching her. And and that might lose some people, definitely. But movies can lose people. It's fine, you know. And like, but documentaries are so afraid all the time of losing people because they don't have the benefit of a, a, an explosion at the end or like a murder that has to be solved or like. I mean, some documentaries do, but generally speaking, they don't. You know, especially a portrait film. You don't have that stuff. 
Um, so you're, they're so afraid of losing, you know, your attention that, that, that they, that they end up being terrible, you know? And like, so like to me, just finding filmmaking ways, visual storytelling, it, it's, it, you know, and, and that requires directing. Mm -hmm. And I'm not afraid, I mean, there's no ambiguity there, because like even the most talking head documentary is directed. Like, hey, can you say that again, cleaner, because I need to make it faster and punchier yeah. for the sake of my issue that I'm trying to yeah. get out there. You know, like, those are just as directed as actresses, but actress, and hopefully, while you're watching, you're drawn in like it's a film, but also you're thinking mm -hmm. about the process. You know, you're thinking, because that's my, my favorite films, fiction and nonfiction are the ones that make you think about filmmaking as you're watching. So you're drawn into the story, you're drawn into the escape, escapist side of yeah. it, but you're thinking the whole time too and you're not left. Like it doesn't, it makes you think and draws you in emotionally. So I think you can do that with nonfiction, you know? You, you broke all the rules of, of yeah. documentary filmmaking. Well, the rules are artificial and not real. Like, and, and like, and, the, and it's, I, I don't feel like people watch this film and feel like they're lied to. I feel yeah. like it's a film where you feel like you were told the truth. And the truth happens to be complex and layered and all this other stuff. And I think that, that even if people can say certain things about other kinds of documentaries, I think they actually feel lied to, yeah. even if it's yeah. more truthful. Like, you know, <laughs> it's like a news story or something is, uh, you ask anyone what they feel about like an edited piece of news yeah. that becomes, that gets called a movie when they're not movies, yeah. you know, like, and, and, and there's all kinds of ways. I, I love all documentaries. It's all kinds of ways to make films, but if you're gonna make a portrait thing or something like this, like, we, you know, she, her, the gift of her was that it allowed, her story, her presence, her charisma, all that stuff allowed me to make these formal choices mm -hmm. that were exciting to me, you know, and, and were excited and, and let, hopefully let people think while they watch, you know? Yeah, it's freeing for the audience too, if you think yeah. about it, because we're so conditioned to think this is how a documentary is supposed to go. Mm. So when you start watching the film, you're like, wait, is this a documentary or, yeah. or what's going on? So, I mean... Well, I write about movies and I edit movies. So I think a lot about how viewers are responding mm -hmm. moment to moment to moment. Like, that's my job. Like, yeah. if I'm editing someone else's film, I, I have to be like, hey, you know, this is the part where it's getting boring or this is the part where yeah. whatever. And as a writer, I'm often writing about films like, you know, it thinks it's doing this, but it's really doing this, that kind of stuff. So I'm very focused on like what people are thinking and that suspicion that you're kind of talking about a suspicion. Like yeah. people watch nonfiction in like a suspicious way sometimes. It's like, I know this is supposed to be real, but I know it's being manipulated. So where, where do I stand with this thing? <laughs> and I'm aware of that the whole time. So I feel like that's what that's what's happening is like I can put you in a position where you're like seeing and you're like but wait and then something happens and you're like oh but wait and then it keeps happening yeah. till the end of the movie you know that, that, that sort of shifting idea of what am I watching what is the reality that's the point it's not it's and it's not an end goal it's like the point is that realities can shift yeah and that you can get trapped in realities and that's a that is a that's the point of the story not just the point of the filmmaking it's not just a dead-end filmmaking formal idea it's the point of brandy's life and brandy's story so i got lucky that it all kind of came together you know yeah and and like you said earlier it's good that it's good that you made it about her and it didn't shift to focus just on the relationship or, or you know yeah. other things it's always about her and her feelings and um, and and her point of view of, of things and not yeah. I mean that's that's a there's a, you know a there's it was just the way to do it B it I, I had no interest in a he said she said sort of thing like that's not interesting you know and and so how often do you get the just she said yeah. Just, just the she said, like you know, and like that's all that matters. And that she is a there. there it's not a romantic version of that she. Yeah. This is a woman who makes decisions that can infuriate you, mm -hmm. and and so. But I, but but that doesn't make her a bad mother. Doesn't make yeah. her a bad person. Doesn't make her a bad human being. It makes her a human being, mm -hmm. and that's ultimately what it's about, you know. Well, what's next for you? Um, well, I. Uh, I edited a film that's coming to Dallas theatrically, um, a film called Listen Up, Philip, which is opening at the um, the Texas Theater, oh, cool. I think, like, next week. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and um, I edit for films. Um, I'm, I'm taking a job teaching, um, but so I can teach and make films and have to do less freelance work, which will be nice. I just, I'm pitching my new film, a film called Kate Plays Christine, which 
takes some of the ideas of performance and pushes them to a whole another level. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I'll just keep making movies and keep helping people with movies and keep writing about movies and just keep doing so my thing. So where can we follow you if, if people want well, to Well, I'm on, I'm on Twitter, mm -hmm. which is, uh, my Twitter is pre-war cinema. And okay. you can follow me and see all the dumb things I say on Twitter. <laughs> And also, like every you know, the films are on Facebook and stuff like that. And um, and prewarcinema.com is my my website. So. Cool. Well, congratulations. Thank and you nice so much. Thank you for the great, great interview. Film.